Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, music lovers and audiophiles. Today I'll be reviewing the new Hegel H190V Streamer DAC Amplifier. I hope you enjoy it. Hegel is a well-respected Norwegian manufacturer of audio electronics. They recently introduced an updated version of the H190 integrated amplifier called the H190V. The H190V is priced at $4,200. When you consider all the circuits packaged inside, this would seem to represent excellent value if the sound quality is high. More on that in a moment. All right, let's do a product overview. I need to unpack the H190V because there's a lot going on inside. In a nutshell, the H190V combines a streamer, which allows you to play high resolution music from Spotify or AirPlay, but it also is room ready so you can stream files from a hard drive or from Cobuzz and Tidal and other high resolution streaming services. It also works with UPnP DLNA streaming. It has a digital to analog converter using Hegel design technologies, including synchronous upsampling to lower jitter and a special master clock system. Hegel also claims to have optimized the cost effectiveness of the clock frequency for the chosen DAC chip, allowing a better overall system design for the price point that they've targeted. The H190V provides a phono preamp. Hegel says the circuit is derived from the V10 phono pre preamp that we use in our reference system. Note that the phono section is designed for moving magnet cartridges only, but you could use an external step-up transformer along with the MM stage if you prefer to use a moving coil cartridge. And in fact, this is the preferred moving coil approach in many parts of the world. The H190V gives you a control preamp, which provides volume control and source switching, as well as allowing remote control via the included remote. The H190V has two analog line inputs with RCA jacks, one XLR line input, and the aforementioned phono input. It also accommodates one coaxial digital input, three optical digital inputs, one USB digital input, and an RJ45 LAN connection. If you count, that's 10 inputs in total. The H190V has fixed and variable outputs, allowing a different power amp to be used or allowing you to drive a subwoofer. On board the H190V, you'll find a headphone amp with a standard quarter inch jack on the front panel. And last, but certainly not least, the H190V has a stereo power amp on board with 150 watts per channel into eight ohms as its rated power. The power amp is a class AB design and features Hegel's sound engine feed forward correction system, dual amp voltage and current gain stages, separate low level and high level power supplies, along with a damping factor in excess of 4,000. I'm taking you through this detail so, well, first of all, that you know what's included. But I also want you to know this isn't your father's integrated amp. Maybe more important is the framing of the value proposition on offer. If you asked what it would cost to create the H190V from separate components, you might imagine something like $500 for a high-res streamer, $800 for a high-res DAC, $500 for a phono preamp, $1,000 for a switching preamplifier, $2,000 for 150 watt per channel, power amp, $300 for cables. My point in all this is that the H190V could easily cost $1,000 more. I think what's often forgotten in such calculations is that it's possible that Hegel or any integrated amp maker has optimized the circuit interactions so that the performance of the integrated system is, at least potentially, better than the performance of separate components. Let's see if that's the case for the H190V. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to The Absolute Sound magazine, which we've been publishing for over 50 years. For $20 per year in print, or $10 per year in digital magazine format, you get 11 issues, 
each with around 100 pages of exclusive equipment reviews, music reviews, and buyer's guides. You also get early access to our three awards issues, Editor's Choice, Products of the Year, and Golden Ear. To subscribe, enter this URL in your browser or go to theabsolutesound.com and click on the subscribe button. Thanks, and now back to the show. Now on to the fun part, which of course is sound quality. I'll say it right up front, the Hegel H190V delivers an impressively great level of sound quality. I don't mean great for the money. I mean just plain great. Honestly, I was wowed by this thing. At the same time, the H190V has a characteristic sound that may or may not be what you're looking for. So let's unpack this. The one obvious caveat is that the performance on offer might be confined to medium efficiency speakers in a medium sized room. By medium efficiency speakers, I mean 87 or 88 dB sensitivity. And by medium sized room, I mean 1500 to 2200 cubic feet. These aren't exact numbers. I'm just giving you an idea of what you might consider. And of course, the sensitivity of the speaker and the size of the room and your listening distance are all interacting here. So you've got to figure out uh, exactly whether this will work. Less sensitive speakers and or much larger rooms might not allow the full dynamic range of some music, although Hegel has plenty of power on tap for most applications, recalling that your average power used for listening is usually something like two to three watts. Anyway, you should always be cautious about whether an amplifier in this medium power range is appropriate for your speakers, your listening environment, and your listening habits. All right, let's break down the sound of the H190V so that you know what I'm talking about. The immediate standout quality of the H190V is its base definition and drive. Within its power limits, I'm going to say that the H190V is very close to state of the art in this department. If you've listened carefully to Class A B amps and then compared them to Class D amps, you might have thought, I certainly have thought, I really wish I could have the best of both worlds. Class D amps often excel at base definition but can sound slightly thin or cold. Class AB amps often sound properly balanced, but have just a little bit of juice or flab or blur on the bone in the bass range. The Hegel manages to deliver this best of both worlds idea, and I was seriously impressed. Let's go over some examples. On the Alison Krauss album, Forget About It, there's a track called Maybe. Early on in that track, there's a single big bass drum whack. The H190V renders this with excellent definition and a sense of air as the bass drum decays over time. And you get a real sense of depth. This combination of power and detail in the bass is rare and sounds quite a bit like what bass drums sound like in concert. On the Taylor Swift album, Reputation, I use the track Delicate because the bass in this track is deep and forms a critical element propelling the music. The Hegel delivered this about as well as I've heard it done, particularly when it comes to the driving second half of the track. I was also impressed with the H190V on Mohini Day's self-titled album. Mohini is an electric bass prodigy and the Hegel allows you to track her rapid moves up and down the fretboard. I was also impressed by how well the Hegel delivered the powerful and punchy drumming on many of these tracks, while at the same time never blurring the bass and drum into a kind of bass soup. The H190V also renders the soundstage really well. Instruments are presented on a wide soundstage, and a very natural sound stage at that. But even more, the sense of depth is just superb. On the new Sigur Ross album, Atta, the band plays with the London Contemporary Orchestra, and the sense of ambient depth is wonderful and, I thought, appropriate. Ditto for some tracks on the aforementioned Taylor Swift album. 
I suspect many of you will be interested in the tonality of the H190V. So let's move along from the base range and cover the overall frequency balance on offer. Keywords when it comes to tonality are transparent, clear, and balanced. What might stand out for you, and might be hard to comprehend at first, is that the Hegel is not treble shy, and yet it's smooth. It's dynamic, but it's not harsh. For example, on Kenny Burrell and John Coltrane from a 1958 recording at the Van Gelder studio, the tonality of the Saxon guitar is warm and fluid, yet clean and detailed. This both and character is consonant with the bass rendition that I described earlier, if you think about it. On the Quartetto Casals version of Bach's The Art of the Fugue, the strings are very clear and well differentiated, but not edgy. The first violinist uses very little to no vibrato and the sound is simply pure and clean. Now, with all this in mind and all of this praise going down, I do think some listeners will want their electronics to do a little more rounding and tone shaping. But if you want that because you assume that clarity and stridency go hand in hand, you really should listen to the H190V. It comes surprisingly close to letting you have your cake and eat it too. The level of involvement with the music that the Hegel allows is spectacular. That said, if you're looking for an amp that fixes the strident or thin sound of your speakers and room, this is probably not going to be your cup of tea. If you think that I was impressed with the Hegel H190V, you've got that right. It has a clarity, smoothness, and dynamic quality that speaks to listeners familiar with live music and who like to actively listen. It also offers impressive value. In fact, I'd go so far as to say this is the benchmark electronics package beyond which you have to spend substantially for small though possibly valuable gains. At least that's the case in smaller listening environments where I think the integrated and unobtrusive packaging of the H190V are also an important asset. In summary, well done to the point of being brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Hegel H190V integrated amp. If you have, please click on the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Also, check in the description for a link to the sign up page for our twice weekly newsletter, which is free. And of course, we'd invite you to become a subscriber to the Absolute Sound magazine in either print or digital format. We've been publishing it for 50 years, and it has some of our flagship reporting. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you again soon.